This is Devon. Home to some of the most stunning coastlines the UK has to offer, providing breathtaking locations and unforgettable scenery up and down the coastline. Numerous close-knit local communities have built up along our shores, living off the sea and the land and enjoying a peaceful way of life. There is one city, however, which is the heart of Devon and is a little bit more fast-paced. Welcome to Plymouth. Home of over a quarter of a million people, Plymouth is the 27th most populated city in England and Wales. Plymouth University is the ninth largest in the UK, catering for over 30,000 students. With its coastal location, it attracts many students to study one of its numerous marine-based subjects. The city is packed full of iconic landmarks. However, there is one landmark that is often overlooked. Drake's Island. Drake's Island is located in Plymouth Sound and covers an area of 26,000 metres squared. Drake's Island 2020 is a plan to restore and develop the island to coincide with the 400 year anniversary of the Pilgrim Fathers setting sail to North America. The company undertaking this project is Sound Engineering. Sound Engineering endeavours to provide sustainable, innovative and accurate design solutions to a highly professional standard. In the company we have Anthony Shapland, the project manager, Simon Perks, the secretary and technical officer, Stephanie Munn, environment and marine leader, Chris White, the creative advisor, Thomas Harkham, the mechanical coordinator and James Beer, the civil work coordinator. We are Sound Engineering. The island is named after the historic Sir Francis Drake. In the 1500s, the island was fortified to protect Plymouth from coastal attacks. During the Second World War, these buildings were reinforced, helping to defend Plymouth from the bombing. However, despite the victory, much of Plymouth was destroyed and many of the military fortifications were left behind on Drake's Island. Today, the island is still in the same condition as it has been for the past 60 years. However, much of the island has fallen into disrepair and is in much need of rejuvenation. The numerous old military buildings are now Grade 2 listed and the old jetty still protrudes on the north side of the island. The island is currently off limits to the public. Meetings with our enthusiastic client led to six key selling points for the project. An incredible location and views, open public access, a completely sustainable energy source, invaluable historical experiences, unique facilities, and an overall increase to tourism to Plymouth. Stakeholder management and engagement will be vital during the planning, construction, and life cycle the Drake's Island 2020 project. The key stakeholders are Plymouth City Council, the Environment Agency, Rotolot Limited, Plymouth University, the RSPB, the Ministry of Defence, Natural England, English Heritage, and the Tamar Estuaries Complex. There are many different avenues that can be taken to fund the 15.6 million needed for the project. Similar to the Royal William Yard, Sound Engineering aims to secure funding from areas such as the EU Regional Development Fund, UK Government Grants including the Coastal Communities Fund, and the Heart of the South West and Renewable Energy Grants supported by Plymouth University. Drake's Island 2020 consists of a modern, sustainable, luxury hotel built onto the south-facing cliff. The listed buildings have been carefully restored to house the multi-function conference venue and energy hub. Access is provided by regenerating the jetty and constructing a reception area and lift shaft. The Museum for the History of Plymouth is also situated in the carefully restored casemate. 
The hotel is constructed with a steel frame that can be assembled once the seawall has been completed and backfill deposited. Hollow core floor units and precast walls will be used to enable fast construction. All of the structural elements have been designed using master series and to relevant standards, including Euro codes to UK national annex and building regulations. 45 well-designed rooms within a five-star rated hotel will accommodate up to 100 guests. The on-site restaurant boasts panoramic views of the Plymouth Sound and Breakwater. The structural steelwork has been arranged such that all services are hidden within the service space above the corridors. This gives extra headroom without adding additional building height. The energy hub is the heart of the island, providing both heat and power throughout the year. The two forms of renewable energy used are wind and biofuels. A 52 metre wind turbine, rated at up to 800 kilowatts, will be situated off the coast of the island. Biofuel use will be algae grown in pods anchored in the sound. The ORC plant for energy production will be located in the commanding officer's house. A BREAM assessment was completed for the hotel and it will be expected to achieve an excellent rating. Other BREAM sequel assessments will be carried out for other works on the island. The barracks and ablution block have been chosen as a location for the multi-purpose conference facility and venue. The buildings will be completely renovated and restored from their neglected state back to their original condition, providing a practical space to deliver events in a unique location within the southwest. The images show the different styles of event that the venue will be able to cater for, including corporate events, conferences and music gigs. This space will be achieved by a complete internal reconstruction. The casemates are the chosen location for the Military Museum to celebrate Plymouth's maritime heritage. Sound engineering aimed to retain as much of the original casemates and supporting infrastructure as possible during the renovation process. All core services will be installed to the casemates, conforming to the Building Regulations Compliance Guide. Access to the island will be via the newly refurbished jetty, incorporating a floating pontoon to allow access at all states of the tide. The newly designed arrival building is the first point of contact with the island. Via an elevator and staircase, guests can gain access to the upper part of the island and hotel. Due to the high flood risk of the building, flood prevention systems have been incorporated into the design. A footway has been designed to the DMRB standards and will serve all areas of Drake's Island from the access lift. All of the main services, including electricity, water supply, drainage and foul sewers, will be situated under the footway, again designed to DMRB standards. The island must have safe and affordable access. Due to the island's location, access can only be provided by water and air. Air access will be restricted to emergencies. The jetty will provide the landing stage for any incoming pedestrian and supply ferries. The existing jetty is located in an optimum position to provide access at all levels of the tide. The ferry terminal on the mainland will be located at the Barbican. The project will start in July 2015 and will be operational by August 2020. The construction will be completed in 11 phases over the course of three years. The key project milestones are access, energy production, the hotel construction and refurbishment of the listed buildings. Drake's Island 2020 aims to bring together many of the tourist attractions on the Plymouth waterfront. These include the Barbican, the Ho, Mount Batten, the National Aquarium, Royal William Yard and Mount Edgecombe. Using existing passenger ferries, a link-up between these locations and the island is proposed. Drake's Island 2020 has numerous construction challenges to ensure no damage is caused to the many protected species. Several applications have already been submitted for a hotel on the island, including one just last year. This was rejected for several reasons, most notably for failing to protect the seahorses and little egrets present, as well as the complexity of the works and the potential for issues with construction. 
Sound Engineering have proposed protection measures to ensure no protected species are harmed and mitigation measures to increase the area and quality of habitat for the seahorses, little egrets and the bats. Sound Engineering's detailed construction program, construction phase plans and habitat protection methodologies will ensure planning will be granted for the 2020 scheme. A detailed cost estimate was produced for all of the works to be carried out on Drake's Island with the entire scheme coming to a final cost of £25.6 million. The cost was arrived at by utilising our own specialist design and engineering knowledge and the SPONS costing book. This sum includes costs for the site compound, sourcing and rental of plant, refurbishment of the existing jetty, construction of a new access building, construction of the seawall, refurbishment of the barracks, ablution block, guardhouse and commanding officer's house, refurbishment of the casemates, construction of the proposed hotel, additional works for the environmental considerations, and sound engineering's fees. Sound engineering will be providing professional services of 2.5% of the total fee. This covers the design work as well as the ongoing consultancy up until handover, ensuring successful delivery of Drake's Island 2020. To fund the project, we will be advising our client to seek a £10 million loan and just over £15 million from the additional streams already mentioned. If this financing plan is carried out and the predicted incomes are achieved, we project that Drake Island 2020 will break even within 13 years and will have made a total of £13 million profit by the year 2040. In summary, Sound Engineering envisions that Drake's Island 2020 will bring a welcome asset to the Plymouth waterfront, reinstating the jewel in Plymouth Sound to its rightful state. We believe our design will fulfil this aim. Drake's Island 2020. Energising Plymouth.